Are you not tired of being overlooked? Are you not tired of walking somewhere and literally no one looks at you because you are just plain. You're just average. You're one of the average people. I will in this video show you how to stop being ugly. I'm not saying any of you are ugly. I'm just saying how to glow up and how to look better than the average person. Hi guys, my name is Liz and welcome back to my channel. I just want to preface that none of the things that I'm gonna mention, the products, whatever, are sponsored in this video. But this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online therapy platform that can easily connect you with a licensed therapist that can help you with any issue you might be facing. BetterHelp has a network of over 30,000 therapists, so you can easily find a therapist that is the right match for you. If the therapist that you found was not the right match, BetterHelp gives you the option to switch therapists with no additional charge. So you save a lot of time and you save a lot of money. What I absolutely love about BetterHelp is that it's online because if you don't know where to begin to find a therapist, if your area has limited options, or if you simply don't want to leave your house, your therapist is just online from the comfort of your own home. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and then you'll get matched with the therapist in as little as a few days. You can schedule video, phone, or message-based sessions, whatever you are most comfortable with. BetterHelp also provides you with an online journal and you can attend group sessions. Basically, you get all the same benefits as an in-person therapist, but without the extra hassle. If you think that you might benefit from therapy, then please click the link in the description below or visit betterhelp.com slash wizard Liz. Clicking that link will not only help support this channel, but it also gives you 10% off your first month at BetterHelp. Let's get started. First things first. You are not ugly, you're just boring to look at. See, I was watching this podcast from this rapper and he was interviewing this uh, interviewer and she has like these kind of jokes back and forth and she goes like, would you ever date me? And then he looked at her, he's like, no, he's like, you're plain, you're, you're average looking. He's like, you have to spice up your look. And I know it was like a joke and stuff, but that really made me realize it's true. If you look at celebrities and why we find them so mesmerizing is because they're four hours into makeup. They have all these costumes, stylists, hair done, best hair people, all these things, right? They put so much effort into their looks. But if we take away a lot of these things from these celebrities, their makeup, all these things, when they're walking outside, you will not look even twice at them. They look average. But with all the extra things, they just look better than the average person. Anyone that stands out, even if they have like this weird clothing style, even if, if, if it doesn't fit like society standards, anyone that stands out will be more attractive than the average person because you make us feel something. People get just bored of seeing the same faces every day. So when there's someone that stands out, you look back at them like, oh my God, whoa, you know, it's like a surprise. So you, we have to figure out, okay, how do we elevate this look? The base is good. How do we just make it more interesting to look at? First thing you need to realize is your face shape, okay? What kind of face shape do you have? I have a long face that's like oval, okay? I have very high cheekbones and my face is just oval. So for me, hairstyles like these look very nice, just flat, straight hair, right? Or if I would cut it a bob, it will also look very beautiful. Now I have, uh, for example, my sister, she has more, her jaw is very like Angelina Jolie's and she also has high cheekbones, but she has like more a diamond shaped face. Her face would look better with layers. So she looks better with layers and like back. So more volume in the hair. Thing is you need to understand what hair color suits you the best. So for example, my original hair color is not black. My original hair color is like the wood behind me. And it's like the same as my eyes. It suits my eyes very nicely. It's very beautiful. But I feel like black makes me stand out more and it differentiates me kind of also because I'm very pale, black hair, and then I have like orange kind of eyes, you know? It's a, it's a weird mix. And my sister, for example, her natural hair color is black. It's so, so black. But then she used to color it blonde and she looks so much better blonde than her original hair color. Because when she has black hair, she looks very intimidating. So it doesn't work for everyone. So you need to figure out, okay, what is the hair color that looks best on me? Sometimes your natural hair color looks the best on you. But sometimes trying something else will make you stand out. You also need to understand your color palette. So your color palette is basically the predominant color of you 
and your body, right? So for example, if you hold your hands up, look at your veins here. What veins are more predominant? So for example, mine are more blue, the blue ones are more predominant. So that means I'm a cool tone color palette. This will determine the uh, kind of clothes I wear, the colors of clothes I wear, even the hair color that fits me the best and the jewelry that fits me the best. If you have more red or yellow veins that are predominant, then you are probably a warm skin tone. So then you have to look at gold jewelry, uh, certain colors that you that looks beautiful on you and will not look that great on me. For example, if I go for a nude color, it washes me out. I cannot wear nude. Like for example, black or um, pink is very beautiful on me. You have to look up your color palette and, and start to understand the color palette. Your clothing style can make you 80% more attractive. See, the thing is, imagine you have a very plain face, whatever how you express yourself in your clothes will make you more attractive, like insanely. And the key here is do not adapt a clothing style that you do not feel comfortable in. The worst thing to see is someone that is just adapting a feminine clothing style, but it doesn't look good on them because you can tell they're not comfortable. They're walking in on heels and they're not comfortable. Do not do this if that's not what you feel comfortable in. What you feel comfortable in and the style that you like is what will give you the most confidence and confidence is also what will make you attractive see you can have the most beautiful face yeah but if you don't have confidence backing up that face you will not be beautiful or attractive to anyone so your style has to fit your body type so you have to look at what kind of body type you have that's also all on the internet you can look at it and you can be like what looks the best on me because certain clothes don't fit certain body types i love tomboy clothing style uh, i like to dress feminine as well it's like a whole mix you know my wardrobe or very casual but i always make sure it's kind of basic but it looks clean and nice I feel like that's my style. And when I go out in the evening, I dress it up a little more, but also not over the top because I never want to overshadow my beautiful face. Another thing is eyebrows. Eyebrows are very important. Why are eyebrows important? Because eyebrows are literally on our face and we use our expressions with our eyebrows, okay? Um, eyebrows also accentuate your uh, eye shape. So for me, I had like two years ago, I had like very bushy eyebrows. I used to not pluck them. I let them grow. And then underneath that, I had microblading. So they were so black and big and they used to make my eyes look so small and I looked more masculine. I made them like skinnier now because I like this look and this accentuates my eyes the best. So you have to look at, okay, what will accentuate my eyes? On some people, skinny eyebrows are really ugly. It will age you. It will not look good on you. If you have different eyebrows, it can completely change your whole face shape. I have like apps on TikTok. They, they show you what your best eyebrow shape looks like. You can go to an eyebrow lady that knows exactly how to make them symmetrical and nice. And this is also big, the biggest issue, yeah? If you don't have symmetrical eyebrows, that already can really ruin your face. So if, if, you, if your face isn't symmetric to begin with, make sure your eyebrows are just symmetric. That will make a huge difference. You can use the inverted filter on TikTok and you can see if your eyebrows are same or not. It's plastic surgery. Am I against plastic surgery? No, absolutely not. Do I think like against the whole self-love movement? No, absolutely not. I know people that became more confident after plastic surgery and I also know people that became more insecure after plastic surgery. You have to be very careful with the plastic surgery you do. I think the best kind of plastic surgery is the kind of surgery that keeps you guessing. I see a lot of people getting like nose jobs, all these things. I, I think it's amazing for some people, but some people, you guys really don't need it. Like I've seen a lot of people that have gotten nose jobs and regretted it and have to go again four or five times to fix their nose. Surgery again and again, because e either they have deviated septum, um, the nose is too up, um, the nose is not small enough. It's so many issues. Sometimes your original nose fits your face the best. Say so do your research before and also make sure if you didn't have issues with your face before and you actually are like on the fence, don't do it just because it's a trend because you might really ruin your face. The thing is in order to be attractive, you have to look healthy. This is why people like uh, people that have like nice skin, that look good, like physically, have nice teeth. They like people that have nice hair, healthy hair, because we're all just looking in health in another person. And this is what healthy to us looks like. That's why I'm saying eating disorders are not good looking. You might think like, okay, I'm gonna starve myself, which I used to do. 
I looked literally scary. Scary. And it was not even my body. It was my face as well. What is that? There's one thing with bulimia, which I had. Your face will always be big and swollen. If you look at people that are bulimic because they constantly throw up, this is constantly working here and like your lymph nodes here swell up. So your whole cheeks are always swollen. So you always look swollen. Your eyes are always puffy. It's really not a good look. You barely have hair. I barely had hair. All my hair fell out. I was literally like a skeleton. And you know, I, I literally like got rid of my eating disorder because I looked at myself and I was like, whoa, that's really ugly. <laughs> what you actually should do is you should make sure that you're toned no matter at what weight. Even if you're like a little bit bigger or, or you're skinny, whatever, just make sure you have muscle, a little bit of muscle, like train at home, even train some muscle. You know why? When you have muscle, your muscle burns calories without you not even doing anything. Like for example, I, I trained with my personal trainer. We created some abs. We, we trained my butt, all these things. So I always have muscle. So now, even if I want to, I don't really gain weight anymore. And I eat every day. I literally eat like candy, chocolate, I eat all these things sometimes. I still don't gain weight because I have muscle that's automatically burning off my calories. You have to have healthy hair. So for example, what I use for my hair, I'm gonna put it all up here. So I have this specific shampoo, specific conditioner, and I do hair masks once or twice a week, okay? This is very important. Most like people that have frizzy hair or wavy hair, you guys need specific shampoos for your hair type. Look up the best shampoos, try different shampoos and think, okay, which one is working for my hair? Which conditioner is best for my hair? A lot of women that actually have like um, curly hair and they just, they, do, they don't do the curly hair girl method, like nothing, they don't do these things. And then their hair just constantly looks frizzy. It's not a nice look. Look into, okay, what are the best products for curly hair? How can I like make my curls be healthy? And if you want to style your hair afterwards or make it straight, that's fine. But make sure your original hair is already healthy. So if you're balding, I have some, uh, I'm gonna also put the products up here that you can use that works for me. Um, so because basically when I had my ED, all my hair fell out and I barely had any hair. So um, these are the things that I used. And now what I actually use is collagen. I put a collagen scoop always in my tea. I will put up the collagen that I use and literally it made my eyelashes grow. It Listen, these things make your hair grow everywhere, okay? And as a girl that lasers her hair, that's not nice, okay? But it does help with like your head hair, with your eyelashes, they'll be long, you know? The hair doesn't return everywhere. But like, for example, on the legs and stuff, it does. Another thing is if you have dry eyes and your eyes easily get infected, you need eye drops that will hydrate your eyes and you need to do it every morning and every night before you go to bed. I have that issue, I have very dry eyes, so I easily get like pink eye and infection. So then I always had to put like the drops in and now it's much better. And it also whitens your eyes inside. So it's very nice. Take care of your lashes. Your lashes are literally around your eyes. Your lashes can make you a hundred times more beautiful just because you have long lashes. So what I use is I always use eyelash conditioner and I use also like this eyelash serum. I used to use like the popular ones before, but they made my, get me like dark under eye circles. So I stopped using them. Now I use the ones that don't have proroglidin or something in them that is much safer for your eyes. Another thing is eyelash lift. I always get my eyelashes lifted because I think it just looks better during the day and it just looks like I have makeup on. Listen guys, during the day, I rarely ever wear makeup. I literally don't. I will put eyelash conditioner on top and uh, it looks like I have mascara on because I have my eyelashes lifted and I put the eyelash conditioner on and I walk out like that and I put my lip gloss on and that's it. And everyone always thinks I'm wearing makeup when I'm not. It's skincare. See, I have a very sensitive skin and I have rosacea skin. Rosacea is an inflammation in your body. Read the book, I put the book up here. It's about rosacea. The, basically how I found this book is there was this guy who was on a podcast and the other guy told him, oh my God, your skin is insane. It's so beautiful. And he said, I literally, He's like, I tried everything. He's 40 now. He's like, I tried everything for my skin and to make it better and all these things. And he's like, but I was struggling with rosacea. So then he was like, I read this book and it completely changed my life. Book is basically about like uh, what foods you, you should eat with rosacea and all these things because this is an inflammatory problem. It is about the foods that will trigger your rosacea or different environments. For example, if I go into a sauna, 
I, I will get like uh, issues with rosacea, so I have to be really careful in hot environments. And by my skincare is literally, I have went back to the basics of the basics, honey. Like I used to be that girl, like uh, so many expensive skincare, all these things, retinol and all these things. I can't. I can't, I literally do like CeraVe now to cleanse my face with CeraVe, yeah. Then I take like uh, this Avene, I'll all pull it up. Then I take this cream and I put it on my face and I also have an under eye uh, for dark circles. Oh my God, you guys, this one from CeraVe, the under eye, I've tried so many, this is the only one that works. I literally, I stand by this. If this cream has one fan, it's me. If this cream has no fans, I have left this earth. I will also use like a charcoal face mask like once a week or twice a week like that you peel off uh, to cleanse my pores. And I also have like a turmeric face mask that will, that's also like cleansing. Uh, oh, I have like a cold mask in the fridge. Like it's just an ice pack, I think, yeah, a pack. And then I do that like sometimes to calm down my face because especially if you have rosacea, it can flare up. So it's good to cool your face down. A sleeping position and your sleep. Listen, honey, I literally years ago, and I'm talking about seven years ago, I saw this old lady, 65, yeah. And she had the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen and literally the best skin I've ever seen. So I was like, oh my God, okay. She was making a video about that she sleeps on her back that she doesn't move her face like around or she doesn't sleep on the sides. She said that's why she doesn't have wrinkles and that's why her eyes are still up like that, you know? And I started doing that ever since. I do not sleep on my sides. I sleep on the back and I sleep a little elevated, you know? And I sleep on a silk pillowcase and I also wear a silk cap to protect my hair because most of your hair damage comes from um, from rubbing it whilst you're sleeping. So either you put it in a loose braid whilst you're sleeping or you put it in a silk cap to protect your hair. Anyway, so I sleep on my back and literally it, it she's right. You don't get wrinkles, your face stays tight like this and your eyes become less and less hooded. Our sleep is so important. Oh my God, like sleep, you guys, during sleep we heal, okay? During sleep we heal, our body heals and you, you will look very bad if you don't sleep well. Whatever you need to do, I don't care if you need to go to the doctor, whatever. Oh, I don't care if you need to like uh, find activities during the day to make you sleep better at night. I don't think, I don't care if you have to release things or stress or whatever so you are able to sleep at night, but you need sleep. You need sleep. If we don't sleep, we don't look good during the day and it's actually very bad for our health. Other things, hydration and food. I drink three liters of water a day, religiously, yeah? Ever since I've started doing that, because before I used to always say, oh my God, I drink so much water. I didn't, okay? Until I started drinking three liters a day, I was like, oh my God. My digestion became so fast, literally. Um, I am more plumped, more, more, I look more like brighter. Even my eyes become lighter because I'm very hydrated, you know? And then also your food. You guys eat rubbish. You eat rubbish all day and then you're like, oh, why is my skin like this? Why am I puffy? Why is my face so like this? Yeah, because look at the food you're eating. Do not eat processed foods that much. It's not, I'm not saying never eat it. I'm saying watch what you eat. If you eat something, make sure it's like more healthy. It's anti-inflammatory food that can help you combat your inflammation. And I literally, the most of my time, I was bloated. My whole face was bloated and I was just filled with inflammation. I wasn't ugly, my skin was inflamed, my cheeks were inflamed, so you could barely see my face because it was just all like a swollen person. So combat your inflammation by, I use these products now, I'm gonna all put them up here that really help with my inflammation. Omega 369, amazing, thank you. Glutathione, glutathione supports the liver health, yeah? It's very important for your liver and it also helps with your digestion. Then I have another thing that I take for it. It's a digestive enzyme. It's um, with bromelain. Bromelain also helps with swelling and digestion. Um, turmeric supplements, or you can just drink ginger tea. That also helps with inflammation. Anything that combats inflammation is very good for you. It will make you look more attractive. When you have a lot of inflammation, you don't look like yourself. Teeth are very important. I think like teeth are one of the most important things on your face. Like literally people, I've seen girls that are 
so gorgeous just because their teeth are nice your smile is so important you constantly talk you're like if you're smiling you're like more they will perceive you as more nicer and if they see that your teeth are nice and white they'll think oh this person is very healthy because we look at the teeth to find health in people right so invest in a good smile for example i had braces my literally for three years i think and it completely even changed my jaw like braces can change your jaw and make you like way more attractive you guys don't understand how important this part of our face is so invest in a nice smile. And also, if you get veneers, don't get the fake, really bad looking veneers. If you even go for a color of veneers, make sure the color is like more natural and not extremely white. Because I feel like if someone has like crazy veneers, it's also not attractive. The other thing is your nails and your hands. Make sure your hands are always moisturized and your nails are clean, both on your feet and your hands. See, you don't have to put like nail polish, all these things. It just has to be nicely manicured, like clean. So then when people look at you, they don't see like these crazy nails or crazy toenails, because that is scary. I don't care how pretty you are. If I see them crazy nails, I run. Hands can be so attractive. Like literally my ex, for example, he literally tells me now that he looks at the hands of every single girl because he liked my hands so much. He said like, for me, hands are important now, you know? So make sure your hands just look nice, clean, manicured. The thing is less is more. See, for example, for my face, if I put like glam makeup, like full makeup, this and that, I look like a drag queen. And I have nothing against drag or all these things. It just, it's not what the vibe I'm going for, you know? So it doesn't look good on me. So I always go like for this more natural look. Even if I do makeup, it's more natural, all these things. And it fits me better. Makeup shouldn't take away from your beauty. Makeup should accentuate it. It should make your eyes pop a little more. It should make your lips a little bigger and nicer or whatever you want, you know? But it shouldn't take away from it and completely like make you make you look like, oh, whoa, this is too much or this is too scary. Just find a makeup look that suits you and your face and your features the best. Uh, and it's the same way, like, like with clothing and everything. Don't overdo things that it almost takes away from your own beauty. Like your beauty should be the natural center point and anything extra you do should just add to it. Thing is trauma healing and soul healings. I know a lot of people don't believe in this stuff, but that literally changed my face. And why is this? Because a lot of people, they hold their traumas and their emotions in their face. Sometimes you're not ugly. Sometimes you don't recognize yourself anymore because there is trauma stuck in your face. I remember before that when I didn't do like my soul healings, people used to always tell me, why are you sad? Why do you always look sad? I had a sad expression in my face. And even when I was just, I, I looked in the mirror and I thought, no, this is normal, right? Everyone else would give me that comment. Now, when I started doing soul healings, even my therapist, she told me, Liz, you hold all your emotions in your face. So when she started removing those little by little, my face started to literally change. Even when I look in the mirror now, I'm like, whoa, like I look like how I envision myself. And it's crazy. These things are like miracles. Same thing, like when sometimes people, they eat the right thing, they, they work out this and that, and they can't lose weight. Sometimes it's because you have trauma stuck in your body. Like for me, for example, my digestive system was not working at all. Like when I had an ED, I used to take laxative, I used to take the, all these things, and I couldn't anymore function, my body couldn't function on its own anymore. So then I started doing trauma healing, and what I understood is even in my stomach area, there was trauma stuck. And a lot of women hold their emotions and their trauma in their womb. When we start to remove that, I'm telling you, I think I have the fastest metabolism I've ever seen ever. And it's crazy to me because I would never think I would come to this point. A lot of you guys maybe have the same issue. You're doing everything right. You cannot seem to lose that weight. Maybe it's traumatic weight. Maybe there's trauma stuck in your body. And I feel like when I, whenever I talk about this, people are like, oh no, you're crazy, this and that. You guys need to realize that we're a soul. <laughs> we're not this body. What is this? What is this? This is nothing, you know? What we're inside, that is what matters. And when you heal the inside, the outside changes. If you look at people that have done a lot of spiritual healings, their eyes will always be different than the average person. You can always see in the eyes. 
because the eyes are the window of the soul when the soul is more evolved the eyes will always show people that see the beauty in everything are beautiful people what you perceive in the world is what you are so for example me i can i have yet to see someone that i've seen and i i say oh that's an ugly person i can find anyone attractive anyone and i genuinely mean that like i look at people like whoa i look at animals like whoa i i find everything beautiful why because i'm a beautiful person i see the world in my rose colored glasses because that's just how how i feel from the inside and what you see in others is what will is what will reflect back to you you look at everyone and you think oh they're ugly oh they're not good they're criticizing this and that what you give out is what you will receive back. People will think you're ugly and they will criticize you even though you're physically attractive. You guys to understand that mean spirits will never be beautiful or attractive to other people. See, you guys might not realize this, but we all feel each other's energies, right? And there is certain people that are even famous that like people will should look at and be like, I don't find them attractive. I find these people scary, even though they're physically attractive, but you wouldn't like really think that you know why you feel their energy the energy around if it's not like a, a good spirit with good intentions you might not find them attractive at all but when someone is actually a nice spirit and like a good person even though they're maybe physically not attractive you will find them more attractive in so many like physically beautiful women but then when they said something that was so mean about someone else i was like oh okay i'm done <laughs> like I really do not think you're like you might be physically still beautiful but you're not attractive to me you know I really really dislike mean-spirited people whether it's a man or a woman the other thing is confidence listen you can be the most gorgeous person on earth you can be like the insanely beautiful model whatever if you're gonna walk inside of the room looking like this <laughs> no one is gonna find you attractive you have to walk into that room like you own the place shoulders back looking around like it's okay to recognize that you're beautiful like i hate when people think like oh when someone that's actually attractive says like i'm attractive and they're like oh you're narcissistic oh you're vain why can they not state the obvious they're not bad people for finding themselves attractive okay they're attractive and maybe if you don't think they're physically attractive but they think that about themselves why does that bother you you know let those people think that it's nice it's nice when someone feels good about themselves see people are so bitter these days they don't want to see anyone happy they don't want to see anyone feel good about themselves don't project if you don't feel good about yourself then work on that but let that person be happy about themselves it's so fun to watch it gives me so much like Oh my, it fills my heart up and it, it literally makes me feel so happy that like other people feel good about themselves. Okay, guys, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you got, I helped you guys in some way. And yeah, I love you guys so much. You guys are amazing. And yeah, I see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Love you.